Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here, and today we are looking at when Rogaldorn, Primarch of the Imperial Fists, met his brother Alpharius, Primarch of the Alpha Legion. Oh yes, and we know where this one is headed, don't we? Oh, I can feel the excitement already. But as usual, first off with a spoiler warning for anyone who has not read the novel Praetorian of Dawn from the Horus Heresy series as we're going to be discussing events from that novel today. And as always, I really recommend you go out, check out the novels for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy them. And, you know, get that enjoyment for yourself. Not only do you get the most enjoyment out of it, but we keep supporting the amazing Black Library, who, thanks to them, we get all these great stories, we get all this great lore, and that's what we enjoy, and that's what we get to discuss like we are today. So let's do our part and keep these stories coming. And let me tell you, this book is a great read. You don't have to be an Imperial Fists fan to enjoy it. I wasn't before I read it. If anything, I kind of hesitated before getting it because, you know, I wasn't an Imperial Fists fanboy. I wasn't a particularly huge fan of Dawn, but I can certainly see myself getting a force of fists now. And the same goes for Rogel Dawn. By the end of this book, you will understand why so many people love the Primarch of the Imperial Fists. Dawn is an absolute badass. There is no way he is anything but. And with that said, let's jump straight in. The throne was dark. Light spilled from behind Arcamus and Dawn as they stepped through the door. The walls were sheets of beaten copper, curved and riveted so that they looked like rippled fabrics of curtains. Tiny beast heads carved in jet capped each rivet head. The floor was an oval expanse of brushed steel. An oval table sat at the centre of the floor. The ceiling soared up and up, tapering to a shadowed point far above. At the far end of the room, on a plinth of raw iron, was a throne spun from carbon and gold wire. A figure sat on the throne, hands resting on the chair's arms, the light from the door gleaming off his armour's silver trim. Scales covered the curved plates, and a crest of bronze serpents rose from the crown on his head. The throne would have been huge for a human, made to amplify the power of those who sat on it. The armoured figure fitted it perfectly, his size and presence making it seem not at a throne, but a mundane chair. The Emerald Hydra on the figure's chest winked reflected light as he inclined his head in greeting. Pretty cool entrance from Alpharius here, just kind of chilling on the throne, throws out a nod to his brother, if it is Alpharius of course. How do we know? You can never tell. So many scenes in this Horus Heresy series, they just they come across as such great movie scenes, you know, you can just imagine them on the big screen. Yeah, I'm not too sure if I'd ever want to see it on the big screen, you know. So many adaptations end up being disappointments. Um, I'm not sure if we'd want to risk the Horus Heresy coming to the big screen, but anyway, let's get back to the point. Dawn met the green glow of its eyes. Close the doors, he said to Arcamus. Arcamus turned and pushed the door shut. The light vanished and the gloom became true darkness. A little too dark for such a meeting, said a voice from the throne. Pale light kindled within the folded surface of the walls. The metals gleamed, shifting between colours of ice and moonlight. Dawn stepped forwards, eyes fixed. The sound of his steps rang softly on the floor. He stopped in the centre of the room, next to the table. Arcamus stayed next to the door, his hands still beside his weapons. Dawn looked at the figure on the throne for a long second and then turned away. Dispense with the theatrix, he said. A second figure in armour stepped from a fold in the chamber's walls. His armour was also the indigo blue of the Alpha Legion, but plain and adorned only by an Alpha symbol on one pauldron, a crocodilian head snarling in silver on the other. To Archamus's eye, the figure was fractionally shorter and less bulky than the figure on the throne. An attempt to impress, said Dawn to the figure. His voice level cold. Or a test. 
My apologies, said the second figure. A habit, that is all. No, said Dawn. A choice. I really like this here. Dawn knows exactly what is up. He knows his brothers and the Legion's games. Alpharius, you know, he's trying to play it off as a habit. Oh, it's just my nature. But Dawn's right. No, you are choosing to play this game. Arcama stepped away from the door, eyes moving from the two figures to his surroundings. He blinked briefly through infrasight, dark vision, and the images formed from sonic and electro field distortion. Then he blinked the augmented views away and looked with his eyes alone. My lord, he said, there is another one to the right of the throne. Armour cycled down to minimal power. Dawn nodded. Thank you, Archamus. I was just waiting to see if my brother was going to reveal his presence now or whether he was going to continue this charade. I mean, come on, Archamus. Dawn's got this under control. You don't have to point out these things. Dawn turned as the third figure stepped forwards, armour purring to life as he moved. This one was also smaller than the figure on the throne and wore armour that spoke perhaps of a line captain or battalion commander. A crest of stiff white and black striped horsehair hallowed the top of his helm, and a green cloak hung from his shoulders. His right hand rested on the pommel of a sheathed sword. Dawn kept his eyes on this newest figure. At a glance, Archimus could tell that all three of them were shorter than Dawn, but taller than himself very large for legionaries, but within a blurred zone of size that made it difficult to judge whether they were legionary or primarch. There were different differences though, tiny variations in stance and posture that would have been lost to a normal human eye. The one on the throne was the largest, and his armour and demeanour screamed that this was the lord of the Alpha Legion, but there was something too blunt about that picture. Archamus had a fleeting impression of slight restriction in the way he moved, as though the figure were as much armour and machine as flesh. As for the other two, the one in the plain armour would not have been out of place standing in a rank of a hundred legion warriors. The most recent one to appear had size and moved as though used to command, but both qualities were expected in a ranking space marine. Again, my apologies said the same deep and smooth voice that had spoken from before, but this time it came from the helms of all three figures. An apology only has meaning if it is rooted in regret, said Dawn. Your words are meaningless. No reply came, but the third figure reached up and unlocked his helm, as the figure in the throne rose, stepped down to the floor and took his own off. The warrior in the plain armour followed suit. Three near identical faces looked up at dawn. All were olive skinned and clean shaven, their skulls hairless. Archamus could see echoes of both dawn's features and those of the other Primarchs, but somehow no one feature dominated, as though the face were a blend of all the others. The three faces were very similar, though there were minute differences in bone structure and musculature but no two sets were, differences were the same. Each of them seemed to wear a mask that was deliberately the same, but also different enough that anyone trying to sort one from another would become lost in the differences. And of course, he realized that was exactly the intention. Dawn's eyes had not moved from the figure who had worn the plumed helm. Alpharius, said Dawn, as he stepped forwards, eyes hard. The other two warriors began to bow, yielding their pretense as Dawn went to greet his brother Primarch. Dawn turned suddenly, his hand flashing out to the figure who had stepped from the throne. The blow never landed. The figure twisted from the side Dawn's fist, the speed of the movement the mirror of Dawn's attack. Archamus' bolter was in his hand, even as the two Alphan Legion warriors drew their weapons. Dawn's got your number here, Alpharius. It's interesting to note here that, as we've seen before, the Alpha Legion Marines are generally larger than their counterparts from other legions, and their Primarch 
the smallest of all the brothers. Of course, you might expect that because he's twins, but it enables Alpharius to hide amongst these men a lot easier than if he was a normal sized Primarch. You know, if he was a, a more average size to the rest of his brothers, he would stand out like a sore thumb, obviously. Hold, roared Dawn, and the room froze. The sound of the word folded and echoed off the walls. He lowered his fist, and the figure he had tried to strike straightened. Try my patience again, and I will not stay my hand, said Dawn. Alpharius, for Alpharius it must have been, raised an eyebrow. The other two warriors stepped next to him, and for a moment it was as though Archamus were looking at three paintings of the same subject, to different themes, Lord, Warrior, Son. When did you know? said Alpharius, and Archamus recognised the voice as the same one that had spoken throughout. Before I stepped through the door, said Dawn. Alpharius breathed a cold chuckle. These are my senior commanders in this war zone. Compliance, said Dawn. The war is over. Alpharius gave the smallest of shrugs. We will see, he said, and gestured to the legionnaire with the cloak and crested helm. This is Ingo Peck and Kel Salonius. I know of them, said Dawn. Alpharius looked at Alcamus. You can lower the weapon, Master Huskarl. With both my brother and myself here, there are few places in the galaxy safer than this room. Alcamus kept his bolter steady. Dawn glanced at him and gave a small nod. Alcamus lowered the weapon and clamped it to his thigh. We can speak alone if you wish, said Dawn. Alpharius shook his head. I do not keep things from my commanders. That is a lie, said Dawn calmly. Alpharius smiled. Do you really wish us to be at cross purposes, brother? We are at cross purposes, and honesty is a quality I value. And I do not. Is that the point you are trying to make? You did not declare that you were operating on this world, not until you had to. Our ways are not the same, but you cannot question their effectiveness. You did not have to kill them. Dawn's voice shook the air like a roll of thunder. Archamus looked at his Primarch, but Dawn's face was as fixed and emotionless as ever. Only in the dark glitter of the eyes did the rage leak out. When he spoke again, his voice was low and controlled. You did not need to kill them. A heartbeat of silence followed the words. Archamus watched Alpharius and his two warriors. All of them were as unmoving and expressionless as statues. Everyone in the chamber knew what Dawn was referring to. The world they stood on had resisted initial overtures of compliance. Dawn himself had taken the task of bringing the world to compliance at the head of his imperial fists. They had been winning, hive by hive, battle by battle. And then the Alpha Legion had arrived. They had announced themselves by taking one of the smaller hives, set to be the focus of the imperial fists next offensive. The hive's leadership surrendered suddenly, following a coup. A signal for Rogal Dawn's personal attention saying that the hive would fall had been received six hours before it surrendered. The signal had used the Imperial Force's highest level of clearance and had been signed off by saying that Lord Alpharius and the 20th Legion were honoured to be joining the 7th Legion in bringing the planet to compliance. There had been attempts to meet with Alpharius, but if they had heard those calls, they remained silent. Alpha Legion forces had been sighted in the weeks that followed. A wing of armour had swept out of the ash wastes to lend their aid to the assault on the primary surface hub. Scattered reports had placed warriors in variations of Alpha Legion colours in multiple battle zones. Dawn had pressed on, and hive by hive the world had continued to fall. But a core of resistant hives remained, centred around the seat of the World Prince. On the eve of a renewed assault to take the last hives, the World Prince had sent a signal surrendering. In the course of a single hour, all of his direct blood relatives had been killed. 
the assassin in each case had been someone trusted and close to the slain. At the end of that hour, the World Prince had given his world to the Imperium, and 401 members of the planet's ruling nobility were dead. Alpharius shrugged, the enameled scales of his armour shimmering with the gesture's movement. We did not need to kill them, that is true. We could have waited for you to grind your way through their troops, step by tedious step. The future cannot be won by a war waged in shadows. It will not be won any other way. Then that future will be dead before it can begin. Do not moralise at me, brother, spat Alpharius. And now it was his turn to flick from control to anger. Would the deaths of all those you would have killed been acceptable because they died in open battle? Yes, said Dawn. Alpharius held Dawn's gaze. I think we see the universe very differently, Rogel. No, I do not think we see the same universe at all. They looked at each other, both of their faces set, so similar for all their differences. The end matters, said Alpharius at last. Victory matters. Everything else is just delusion. With victory, we can build dreams, but without victory, they remain just dreams. And how would you salvage a dream from your victory? Here and now, on this world, we cannot trust the World Prince to rule for us, and you have removed those who could have taken his place. Even a defeated people prefer rule on their own. You have won this battle, but you have done it by seeding the ground with resentment and bitterness. Some would call what I did gentle compared to the ways of our other brothers, Kurz, Mortarion, Angron, even the Khan and fetid Horus. Would you call what they would have done preferable? They, began Dawn, you are certain that you are right, said Alpharius, but if you disdain me, then why not my maker? Why not our father? He created us all. Or do you think my nature accident? Or him ignorant of what I do for him? What any of us do for him? You think he approves of your methods? He created us all, molded the mysteries in our blood, put us to use as he needs, sees what we do and yet chooses to do nothing. What does that tell you? Alpharius makes a really interesting point here. He was made by the Emperor, as all Primarchs were. His nature was designed by the Emperor. For reasons only he would know. But obviously Alpharius fulfills a role that no other brother quite does, as all the Primarchs do. So, for all the scorn that Dawn may have for his ways of war, and of course we have Gilliman, who apparently hated Alpharius, it does boast the question, didn't the Emperor create Alpharius to be this way? To fulfill this role? That's an interesting question. That he expects us to see our own flaws and overcome them, said Dawn. Yes. And how are you progressing with yours? Nothing moved in the chamber. Peck and Salonius glanced at each other, but Alpharius waited, unmoving, eyes unblinking. You will withdraw your forces from this world, said Dawn. All of them, the agents and operatives too. I know that you use them, and I know how. I will be looking for them, and if I find any, they will not be spared. You will not find any, said Alpharius. Dawn shook his head and began to turn towards the door. Archamus moved with him. He could feel the pressure of his lord's anger aching through the air like cold from a glacier. Dawn stopped at the doors and turned back. Your initial strikes were misdirected, he said to Alpharius. You infiltrated one hive and made it fall by systemic destabilizing of authority, but you should have waited. 
you could have used it as a node from which to disperse your human operatives and agents into the other hives. You managed that to a degree, but you could have forced a total collapse in their defences across the planet, not just surrender by assassination. That move was also mistimed. Another 37 hours and the pressure from our assault would have been eroding their ability to communicate. Secondary psychological fear, doubt and confusion would have been rising to a peak. You could have ridden that, played and controlled its pace, forcing hives to fall or change sides at the exact moment when it would amplify whatever effect you wanted. What you did was effective, but it was not optimally so, by your own criteria. Dawn stared at Alpharius, but the Alpha Legion Primarch did not reply. I know you, brother, continued Dawn. I knew that you were here before I walked through the door. I knew that it was you on that throne, but not because you made an error in your masquerade. You made no mistake, yet I still knew it was you. Think on that, brother. It is not that I do not understand what you are or what you do. I understand both. We are what we choose to be. Dawn turned and walked to the doors. Arcamus followed. For the Emperor, said Alpharius as Dawn pushed the chamber doors wide. Dawn paused, then walked on without looking back. Oh, this whole encounter was absolutely great. Two completely different ways of war embodied in two brothers here. And that was really the passage that really made me start to admire Dawn a lot. He's not just having a go at Alpharius' methods because he doesn't understand them. He understands it perfectly, as he goes on to explain. He just disapproves of Alpharius' ways of war, yes, but he also disapproves of the fact that in his own methods, he wasn't even effective as he should have been. And that's what rankles Dawn. Right or wrongly, Dawn feels like Alpharius chooses to be the way that he is. And in some sense, perhaps he is right. And again, Dawn knowing which one of his, is his brother. There are few, if any, Primarchs better at analysing situations than Rogal Dawn. He is up there with the tactically top-tier, tactically-minded Primarchs. He's up there with the rest, some of the very, very best of his brothers. And of course, we have seen before, Primarchs being able to sense one another. Dawn just knows which one is Alpharius. I knew that you were here before I walked through the door. I knew it was you on that throne, but not because you made an error in your masquerade. You made no mistake. Yet I still knew it was you. This does seem to have been developed more as the series has gone on rather than earlier novels, but it's a good development in my opinion. The Horus here Heresy series is it's a bit like the Marvel Universe, it's kind of got better the more it's developed. You know, like most things should. But what did you guys think of this encounter? Did you enjoy this meeting of brothers? Do you think Alpharius was wrong to try and fool his brother? Do you think Dawn should be more understanding? Was Alpharius right about his comments about the Emperor? That's quite interesting. His uh, opinion, you know, the Emperor's made me this way. So if you've got a problem with me, you've got a problem with father, our father. Oh, that's an interesting question to pose. But as always, leave a comment down below to let me know your thoughts. A big, big thank you to all of my subscribers. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help build this channel. Join the community. It's really helping the channel to grow. And, you know, I love bringing the videos to you all. If you enjoyed this particular vid, then, you know, hey, consider dropping a like on it too. But with that said, I'm off. And I'll see you guys again real soon.